OK, I mean, this is... Look, uh, passions are running high on the story, Paul, because mm. I think everyone in Britain, even if you're not really into the monarchy or... Family, we all feel a slight vested interest. Mm -hmm. You know, apart from anything else, we pay for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a huge monarchist. I love the royal family, always mm -hmm. have done. My mother camped on the Mall for Diana's wedding and for Fergie's. You know, I, I grew up in that environment. Uh, I can remember the, the, the jubilee bunting parties in my village and so on. And I really, it really, it's in my DNA as a I'm Brit. I, I love the royal family. Absolutely. And but you, 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 know, you and I have had many dealings with them. You yes. are split, though, aren't yes, you? But, oh, you but two. Piers, Harry is sixth in line to the throne. <laughs> He's not going to make a huge difference to the monarchy. And by the time his father gets to the throne, um, it'll just be Charles, Camilla, William and Kate and their children. So there isn't a great deal of space for Harry and Meghan. So really, they are looking ahead to the future and deciding what to do with their to, life. Great deal of space to do what? Well, to be, be a member of the royal family, because Prince Charles wants to slim it all down into a very small... But that family. didn't include Meghan and Harry. He was quite happy for them to be stars as part of the firm. He just wanted them to, to do their duty. Yeah, but Seems all of to this... me what they don't want to do, they don't want to do the, the boring stuff. Well, okay. Piers, they're not happy. No. They are not happy, so they, they want to, to do Paul, their own... Paul, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Well, because having... I want Paul... But I want Paul mm. to explain. Yeah. Mm. Why? Living in a palace, yes. having people waiting it, on your hands... It's not all it's cracked up to be. What, well, what no. is it, then? Because people can't understand how that no. would be something you'd want it's, to walk it's away It's very from. difficult for the outside world to understand what it's like to live inside a palace. And you don't just marry one member of the royal family, you marry the whole lot. You marry the households, mm. too. Mm. So Meghan's found that her life is being... In, it's an intrusion into her world. A press secretary, the private secretary, the keeper of the privy purse, the ladies-in-waiting... All of them have a say in your life. And she obviously doesn't like that. And Harry doesn't like that. And he does not want why, her... Why marry into it, then? Well, because she didn't know. She, she, loved loved the, she loved the wedding, which was 32 million She had no idea of... what she was getting herself oh, into. Oh, come off it, Paul. No, she didn't. She was a 35-year-old uh, Hollywood star divorcee. She had no idea what she was getting no, into. Nobody can... Come off it. ...understand that world. Oh. It's a very strange I'll, I'll world. take... I will Diana tell you. didn't Paul settle. Paul has a Diana much clearer settle. idea of what... Yeah, that Diana, like Diana I lived in it. Diana in was a 19-year-old virgin when she had to marry Actually, into the Actually, 18 family. when she came into right. the family. And let's, let's yes. remember that. That's a completely different ball game. It, it is a different ball Megan game. Megan was twice Diana's age. True, she was the same age as Diana married. was She was when an she established... Died. TV yes. star. Yes. The idea I she agree. had no idea what she was getting because into. Until because until you're in it, ridiculous. you have that no family. understanding. No, it's of not it. because that family is is a very strange environment to live in. Okay, let me. Uh, we're going to come. Is more on this, but uh, Cheryl, yeah. on yeah. the um, wider issue, Libby Purvis has written. Uh, a very good column, I think, today. Uh, she has a little whack at me, but I'll forgive her. Everyone's <laughs> entitled to that. Um, but she argues that this whole narrative that's mm. now playing out about racism mm. in the coverage is completely untrue and actually quite unpleasant in itself and a form of bigotry. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Libby Purvis. I think it's completely ridiculous. I think oh, that people sorry. that make that accusation have a very short memory mm. because, frankly, the press coverage, the public's reception of this couple when they announced their engagement was fawning. And it was only when they started engaging in, frankly, acts of bizarre self-sabotage mm. and started breaking that social contract with the public, which is, you know, you do your duties in exchange for the privileges that there was this backlash. And I think that there is an interesting question around cultural tensions around race. I think that Meghan's upbringing in America does inform her views of race. We have to remember that in America, you know, they have quite an incendiary race relations history. And mm -hmm. so we have a lot of rhetoric around people of colour about, you know, and also institutionally about affirmative action. And I think we saw some of that in her rhetoric mm -hmm. when she went to South Africa, for example, you know, sisterhood, people of colour, and also that Vogue cover, which did not get a good reception here. And I think that's because in Britain, I think that we aspire more to be colourblind. So there was a little bit of a, the of analysis, a jarring there. The analysis, but it's and not of course, people, people keep going back to the BuzzFeed yeah. comparison. 20 articles which show Kate uh, as, gets more yeah. positive coverage yeah. than Meghan. Do you take yeah, issue think, with that comparison? I think that that is a comparison that doesn't take into context the fact that there hasn't been the same breaking of the contract between mm. the public and the palace with 
Kate as there has been with Meghan. I think that that is the reason why there has been more scrutiny. Well, I don't so think that thing, I'm sorry, but that BuzzFeed thing, there have been a million stories about Kate and about Meghan. Many positive, many negative. You could construct the complete reverse story if you tried hard enough. Nobody wants to do it, it doesn't suit the narrative. But I just thought it was very disingenuous. Let's bring in the guys here. Um, Andrew, I mean, every paper full of ten mm. pages again today, mm. every news <laughs> bulletin, whether you're... This idea is a tabloid story, but forget yeah. it. Yeah. Everyone's gorging on this. Mm. Everyone has a view. I have a lot of mm. very firm views. People are uh, pushing back on that, not least Susanna. I think that's perfectly right. We should have a... We're a free society, we're a democracy. And this actually cuts to the very heart of our democratic system. This, this is what our country's about, yeah. in many ways, the royal family, isn't it? Um, what it, what, this speech by Harry oh. last night, he goes to the Ivy in Chelsea Garden, very nice restaurant. Yeah. If I was there last Sunday, it would have been quite funny if I'd been there yes. last night. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, not uh, sure that you would have been invited. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, wouldn't have been. I might have had a few home truths for him. But uh, what I just got, I'm afraid it made my skin crawl again. Let's listen to a little bit. I'll tell you why it made my skin crawl. The UK is my home and a place that I love. That will never change. I've grown up feeling supported from so many of you. And I watched as you welcomed Meghan with open arms, as you, as you saw me find the love and happiness that I'd hoped for all my life. Finally, the second son of Diana got hitched. Hooray. <laughs> I also know that you've come to know me well enough over all these years to trust that the woman I chose as my wife upholds the same values as I do, and she does. And she's the same woman I fell in love with. We both do everything we can to fly the flag and carry out our roles for this country with pride. Once Megan and I were married, we were excited, we were hopeful, and we were here to serve. For those reasons, it brings me great sadness that it has come to this. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. I don't know how that can make your skin crawl. Well, we're going to get to... Yes, yeah, play the other bit too about the media and why he says he's had to do this. <clears throat> I was born into this life, and it is a great honour to serve my country and the Queen. When I lost my mum 23 years ago, you took me under your wing. You looked out for me for so long, but the media is a powerful force. And my hope is one day our collective support for each other can be more powerful, because this is so much bigger than just us. And he also has one third bit, which is where he talks directly about the fact they obviously laid down their manifesto yeah. for how the monarchy was going to be, and the Queen said, you can sling your hooks. And this is what he said about that. What I want to make clear is we're not walking away, and we certainly aren't walking away from you. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth, and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. I've accepted this, knowing that it doesn't change who I am or how committed I am. But I hope that helps you understand what it had come to, that I would step my family back from all I have ever known. To take, a, to take a step forward into what I hope can be a more peaceful life. 